It's a beautiful December day and we're actually at my family's house. My dad's got beehives out here on his porch. You can see a couple guard bees right there just hanging out on the front porch looking for intruders. Actually that one's dead. It's not too unusual to see a few dead bees out in front of a hive because when they die during the winter the other bees will drag them out and throw them out the front door. I have higher hopes for how my family will treat me. Anyway we're here to extract honey in December. And Why are we doing that? It's a good question but that's what we're doing today. Arthur, what time of year do people usually spend honey? Um, I don't know, June and August? June and August, twice a year. Yeah. So we do tip to a popper in June, and we did sourwood in early August. So we just unloaded the extractor, and we're loading it up with our last batch of frames. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't realize it was the last batch either. There's Bye. three extra. There's three more. Come on, come see the bump. Okay, hold on, I'm filming Daddy. There's quite a bit of honey in there. to do it with us so the kids could see the process. Really the only problem with waiting a long time would be if you didn't have a good place to store it. And we have seen, it's a little bit drier than it might ought be, but it's um, it's extracting fine. It's definitely on the thicker side though. The honey will lose moisture over time. Bees actually are targeting a uh, humidity range, but um, they don't always get it dry enough. And some of this actually was too was not capped. Yeah, it was not, it was not capped off and it was not dry enough, so it needed to be dry. But this frame is just partially capped, which probably means the bees just didn't, this was probably an outer frame and the bees didn't have enough to completely fill it up, have enough honey. When they fill up these cells, then they, uh, they'll, ca they'll cap them off with wax and seal them in. And so to get the honey out, we actually have to take those caps off and we're using a hot knife for this, a little too hot. And then any little cells that we didn't get with a knife, we'll just scrape off and we want to get all of them. Um, and then actually we'll go over all of it because sometimes that knife will make a little wax layer everywhere. And that one's ready to go. And you can see the honey in there. Do you mind getting up close? Can you see the honey on the camera? You can see the honey in there. Any damage that we do to these cells and to the comb now the bees will repair, so you can you kind of will mess up the the tops of them, but the bees come back and repair them the next season. So the top of this frame is to the outside of the extractor, and the extractor spins it out. You might um, not think that's the way the frame should go, but it does. It'll spin it up and out, and usually those cells or those cells are built tilted up a little bit. You won't be able to see that, but the cells are tilted up on this side and up on this side. And the bees did that so we could just extract it with this method. <laughs> they did it so it wouldn't run out when it was liquid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, they know, and there's just a little slow. You can see it with your eyes. I don't think you'll be able to capture it on camera, but you can try it. It's beautiful. So we're going to turn this on. And the coolest thing is that you can see the honey just flying out against the walls of the extractor. Oh, let me get a light. Alrighty. But you can see that honey just flying out against the wall of the extractor. And there's this just honey blasting breeze coming up out of the extractor, so it's like standing in a honey wind. And then the honey comes down through this double screen. And I, I think this is technically still unfiltered. Do they call it, do people who say unfiltered honey, do they run it through a screen? Yeah. 
That's not a filter to me. No, it's not a filter. Because I mean, basically we're getting chunks of wax out of it. I think it's almost never filtered. I don't even want to filter. Maybe a cheesecloth or something. But they sell it as unfiltered. I'm not sure what that means either. But you know, just another word to make it cost more money. That's probably true. Now you can, if you just, you could put all this honey in a big bucket and everything that was in it, from wax to bee body parts, would float to the top. And you would, the honey that came out the bottom out of a tap like this, would be completely, completely clear and clean. When we were growing up, we, okay, so the most honey we ever made was 2,000 pounds of honey. And that was more than this. I'm trying to think how much 2,000 pounds was. That's a ton! That's because it's a... 200 gallons. 200 gallons? Whoa! What did you do with 200 that? 200 gallons. Oh, we had 20 100. hives at that time, and that was kind of like a really... Every one made... had a really good harvest that year. We had so. 12 hives. We had 12 hives? Yeah. Oh, so it was a really, really good harvest. Yeah. <laughs> we had 12 hives when we made 2,000 pounds. We had up to 20 hives. But I think that was the most we ever got in a year when we had 12. That was a really cool year because the the harvest was just so, so good. And that's almost 200 pounds of honey per hive. And my dad's reminding me, and I remember it, those, the hives, we had them stacked up like this high with boxes, like higher than a, a man's head. That was all surplus honey. Like we weren't taking, that was just boxes and boxes of honey the bees made that they would never have eaten. They never could have used all that honey. As our babies get older, I just get really, well it makes me sad, but it also makes me excited because it just, I feel like I have so much more energy to actually do some more interesting things like this um, on our own property where we really haven't had the energy because we've had other projects going on and then just small children take everything <laughs> you've got. What do you think about how hard it is to keep bees now versus in just even 15, 20 years ago? Well, I talked to a well-established beekeeper here and others and they say that we have about a 50% loss every winter. Every so winter, half the hives die. And this is talking to people who have hundreds of These are people that are really good at it for years. Like yeah. Greg has got 400 hives. And, and so, this probably yeah. has a better average than most people, but most people leave, lose one out of two every winter. And that didn't used to be the case. If you were really yeah. careful and you made sure your bees had plenty of honey going into the winter, um, you, you could expect to have most of your hives alive. Right. When we were beekeeping, to lose a hive over the winter was, was almost non-existent. Mm -hmm. it, just, um, it just never happened. And then I think your experience, correct me if I'm wrong, your experience is you've just had trouble keeping them strong, like through this, like keeping them strong through the summer to the point where they survive the winter. Well, what happens is that they get such a mite load towards the end of the season that you've got to treat them just right immediately as soon as you take the sour and honey off, like the 1st of August, you got to get the treatment in. Otherwise, the hive will just die back and then they won't have enough bees to last through the winter. Yeah. Or worse, the queen will die and then you don't have a queen going in the winter. Yeah. Do you know why, or what, do you, what is your theory or your ideas on why it's so much harder? Well, a lot of people have different ideas, but I think it's a raw hive. Yeah. And they develop resistance to just about anything you treat them with. And also there's another factor is that there's a lot of people that are into not treating at all. And what happens is that they have, they're hobbyists and they're not dependent upon this for an income. And so they, their hives may die back or they may lose them all. But what happens is the, the, the big beekeepers, um, 
they treat their hives, but when their neighbors, the hobbyist hives, die, then their bees will rob out the hobbyists' hives, and they'll pick up the mites there, and so they, they suffer from the lack of attention that the hobbyists do, because they want to be purists, they don't want to use any chemicals. And I think that's a great idea, but practically speaking right now, it just didn't work. Is there, I wonder if there, I mean, have you done any research into if there's anyone doing it and succeeding? People are using aggressive management techniques to, yeah, to deal with mites, but yeah. it's not, it's not like agent free and it's not, it's, it requires a ton of work. It's not doing nothing, yeah. but it's yeah. It's very intensive management. People are doing. So they are doing mm -hmm. something, it's just considered yeah. organic practices. Or they're doing selective yeah. treatment. A lot of people do selective treatment of the hives with with mite counts is, my, is what I've heard. Yeah, well that's uh, integrated pest management is pretty sophisticated where you do mite counts and you use uh, ventilated bottom boards and and uh, you, you rotate your frames uh, because the, the, the burrow mites tend to like the drone frames, the drone, because they're big, I don't know why, but they, they prefer the drone yeah. cells. And so the fewer drone cells you have, the fewer mites you might have. It's just lots of little things that people have to manage. always see honeybees when we go up there. And if you go first thing in the morning, what you see is them kind of frozen on the... Yeah, the... Yeah, the ones, the I guess, that didn't go back. Well, maybe I'm thinking of the other bees. Bumblebees. Bumblebee. Yeah, we'll so bumblebees you more. see. But the, you still see honeybees up there in the war when it gets warm and it warms up and you see them. But yeah, the bunny bees, or the bumblebees are the ones that you see, like... They're not asleep, but they're just like sitting on the flower waiting for the sun to hit yeah, them. <laughs> I think they, that's just what they do. Yeah. They don't go home, they just stay on the field all night, <laughs> sleep, in their, sleep in their work clothes. Those are not done yet. No, I think you can, if you need to go, I can finish this off here. Okay. We'll just let it run and. And we can help finish We can we need to turn this off. I'm going to show you what the kids are up to. They got a little tired of extracting honey. Hi, I see you. I love this nice, safe trampoline. Look at you! One of the really fun parts of this process is actually eating honey as you go. And one of the nicest ways to eat it is to eat the honeycomb that you cut off those frames. And just chew the honey out of it. And then spit the wax out. Folks, thanks for joining us today. We had a great time over here. Didn't get a ton of honey. We're, my parents were splitting it with us. Uh, generously for our fairly small amount of help and we had a great time while we were doing it so we'll see you soon goodbye